I am in desperate need of some refreshing today. I'm thinking maybe I should just go and hurry up and quickly refresh before I film this whole video because I know that this may be very distracting. But welcome back. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Today is actually my mother-in-law's birthday, so happy birthday to my mother-in-law, Maria. She is coming over for her little celebration, and we've just been busy today getting everything ready, and you know, it just, it really creates a great mood. Um, I mean, when you're getting ready for company and stuff, sometimes it's all, company is coming, so hurry up and do this, do that, and all of that good stuff, but for the most part, it's it's been pretty good. Um, I have just been running around like a crazy person where he's out there making some ceviche and whew, I would have to say that if you want to get your workout in, clean as if company is coming every single day and you will get your workout in. Um, but right now, I'm just going to take a deep breath and go get myself refreshed and then I will be back. to get a little bit more dressed up for a party, especially when my mother-in-law is going to be here because she really appreciates, you know, looking a little fancier than than your typical every day. So, um, and also green is her favorite color, so, or at least that's what the girls have been saying. So I thought, why not wear a green dress? Um, I wanted to jump into a couple of questions that I got and then share with you something that made my day today. So we will get to the little things after the main portion of today's video. The first one comes from Ankita, which she asked, do you use just one planner for all of your planning or do you have separate planners for your cleaning schedule, work schedules, family activities, and commitments, etc." I thought this was a really great question. There was also a question about uh, what planner do I use? Where is it from? So to answer that question really quickly, it comes from Target and it's by Day Designer. And then I also have another one that I like to use for um, all of my bills. So I keep my bills completely separate from my day-to-day -day tasks. Now before I was buying multiple, multiple planners and there were, there were several reasons for that. I think the largest part of that was because I enjoy planners so much that it was hard to decide and so I wanted to make all of these different planners for all of these different things so I can enjoy all of them. But when I actually think about the way that I do my planning and the way that I actually utilize a planner, it makes the most sense just to have one for me. One where I can see the things that I need to do that day when it comes to work because when I work, I'm switching between work mode and housekeeping mode and just all of the different things that I need to do for my family, whether that is an appointment. I can't tell you how many appointments I've missed because I only I was only looking at my work planner and then I missed some of the appointments for the kids because I don't often have things going on 
you know, when it comes to appointments, for instance. So it just made the most sense to combine everything. So now I just like to go with that one planner that by Day Designer, and that one feels so nice. I love the um, outside of it and that it's completely lined throughout, even in the monthly spread. When I go with a planner for my bills, it's one of those really thin ones. It's about this big and um, there are so many different ones that offer just the monthly spreads. And so that's what I go with for that. And I just recently purchased one for this upcoming year because I've used that other one all year long and um, it's great. This next question comes from Marin Latham. She says, my question is, do you ever feel burned out or resentful of all the work that you have to do at your grandparents? It's a personal question, but I ask because I'm in a similar situation and I just wonder how you do it. And then Rebecca wrote underneath, she said, I know the feeling, I have been doing this for about nine years. What makes me resentful is when people, as in relatives, are not there to cook and clean. Um, doctor's appointments, hospital visits, you get it. But they are there for handouts. I'm actually angry over things because I get the first call. I think that burns me out. So I let them know that that's a great question and I wanted to share my thoughts on this with you. And actually I wanted to read something to you that was just published in, um, that, in that magazine that I was letting all of you know from Oh Wondrous Grace Chronicle magazine. And um, there's a portion in there that kind of covers that topic a little bit, but I can understand exactly what you're feeling. And especially if you have other family available, then it does make it to where you feel like, well, where is everybody else in this time of need, right? And I think with a healthy family, which oftentimes you think, well, where's the help? Who has these healthy families, right? Because every family has their struggles with different things. And I just wanted to let all of you know that I think that there may be struggles within every family when it comes to something like this. And I think that there are always going to be those those individuals within a family who are going to be the ones that are stepping up whether or not they're asked for help and they're the ones that just see what needs to be done and then they go and they want to help but then you have those individuals that are waiting for somebody to say hey so and so can you do this for me because i am just you know, I'm swamped with X, Y, and Z, and I would really appreciate some help in this area. So I know how easy it is to jump to the assumption that everybody should know what to do, especially when that's within your personality to just see that this needs to be done and I'm going, and I'm going to do it. And you know that as you know, a family member or as the daughter or whatever that may be, whatever role you play if you're, if you are the granddaughter, that you know that this is your responsibility, so you are going to take care of this. What's important to understand is that not everybody has that mentality. A lot of people say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. If you need anything, please let me know. And they're willing to just kind of step back and wait to hear if there's something that needs to be done. And then you do have those family members that are going to say, oh no, I have way too much going on in my family as it is. Um, I'm not able to do X, Y, and Z. So, um, you know, and that is obviously a lot more of a struggle, I think, and especially within families just to have individuals that aren't willing to help and then you sit there and you wonder well you know what would happen if i wasn't here right especially if you were the one that's being called upon so i understand and i understand it's kind of like when you have a potluck right it's a potluck and the invitation clearly says you know bring a dish to share with everyone and then you you have the people that come empty-handed and they're going to eat, but they didn't bring anything to help contribute. 
And so that's kind of how I look at things within the family is that there are those people, they're going to be the ones that lead the whole entire potluck. And it's like there has to be that person there to say, hey, we're gonna have a potluck. And I'm going to bring all of the necessities because they're the ones arranging everything. But then you, I mean, there just can't be a whole, all of these leaders in something. So you are going to have your leaders and that happens within a family as well. And, um, but what you do expect is that everybody's going to pull their weight. Everybody is going to realize how important it is to help out. That way it kind of eases the burden for those who are the ones that are the leaders. And so I found that to be very important. I found that to be something that even I was struggling with in the beginning when it came to helping my grandparents. So this is what we did. We had a family meeting and this obviously started with me discussing it with my mother and just sharing with her my own concerns about it. And so we got together, we talked and we said, you know, it would be nice if we could get together as a family and discuss these things that need, that we're uh, lacking or that is whatever it is that's making us feel like we're taking on too much of the burden. And so sometimes it's hard to even look at it that way because you don't want to even make your parents or your grandparents feel as if they're a burden. But remember that we all have different roles and we all have different things going on in our own lives. So it's important to find that, that balance because I still have to help do things over in my own home. I have responsibility here. I have responsibility with my own husband, with my children. And so everybody kind of has their own individual families that they have to take care of. But what are we going to do and how are we going to make it work and everybody come together when it comes to taking care of the grandparents or when, you know, when we have to take care of my parents. So I'm going to read something to you from that article. And hopefully if you're interested in hearing more, because it was, it was quite a lengthy article, that you will go over to Oh Wonders Grace Magazine, which I have linked in my description box below. But my battery is dying, I'm gonna switch that out real quick. So as I said, this was the perfect question because um, Claire writes, what are some of the daily challenges and how do you remain strong through it? And this is of course talking about helping with my grandparents' care. I said some of the biggest challenges have been to simply ask for help when it's needed and not to take bad moods and harsh words personally. When I first started taking care of my grumpy, I never took a day off. I was up early each day, Sunday through Saturday, and would spend several hours over there. It wasn't until I got some advice from my mother's best friend, who had also been a long-term caregiver, that I decided to ask for help. This made a huge difference because up until then, I wasn't making much time for my husband or my kids, all while trying to still take care of my own home and create videos for YouTube. We can put far more on our plate than necessary. It's so important to ask for help, and I believe there are people that are more than willing to help but need to be told what needs to be done. We all wish everybody would just know what needs to be done, but I've learned that voicing our needs allows us the ability to receive what we truly need without the suppressed negative feelings that can sometimes creep in. When it comes to not taking the bad moods and harsh words personally, I've learned this requires a lot of patience and prayer. Because of how I feel towards my grandparents and the respect and reverence I have for them, I know I wouldn't snap back at them, but I can let words affect me in other ways. I can feel like there's nothing I can do that will ever make them happy or be a good enough granddaughter, but deep down I know that isn't true. I know I'm doing my best and such feelings are temporary. So often we want people to be what we envision they should be to us, but accepting them as they are and controlling our own actions and reactions will ensure we keep those feelings in, our prop in their proper place. Taking our hurts and concerns to God brings about a sense of peace we wouldn't gain any other way. So I know that doesn't answer everything within that question, but just know that it's 
these feelings that can creep in are feelings that I think any caregiver will end up feeling at some point. And so my advice is to take a proactive approach by reaching out to other people, letting other people know what kind of help you need, what kind of things that you've been doing and what would be helpful for those people to do. Because maybe it just comes down to the fact that you're the leader in the family and you need to delegate different things to other people. And if you can't get the help that you're looking for, maybe seek friends that would be willing to help. I know that I have so many friends that would be there for an instant in an instant if I needed their help for something, especially a lot of friends from the congregation I attend. And so if you you know, go to church, you, you worship with other brethren, I'm sure that there are many people that would be willing to help in whatever way necessary if you have family members that aren't willing to help. But sometimes it's just about the communication and really speaking to one another out of love instead of, well, you know, I do all of this and I would really appreciate it if, I mean, just really coming to somebody out of love and what is necessary for you. And then in the end, if we seek to do whatever it is that we're doing with a happy heart and as if we are doing it for the Lord, then I think it really changes our perspective in what it is that we're doing. And I also think that we gain so much more power and so much more strength in a situation than we can even than we ever believe that we could have. And that I think is really what it comes down to because um, so often we just think that we're very limited in what we in what we're capable of but you know I just don't think that that is truly the case and so like I said take that proactive approach and just know that God isn't going to give you anything more than you can bear so I hope that that was helpful if any of you have um, some advice on that subject. I would love to hear it in the comments below. I know I learned so much from all of you as well. And I would love for other people to see, you know, just a different perspective on these kind of things or just your thoughts in general. So anyway, so now it's going to be time for me to share with you a little thing that really made my day today. And that has to be some flowers. Some flowers gifted to me by my mom. Of course, I got to go pick them out. Today was my errand day and I went to Trader Joe's for my Trader Joe's run and I got to pick out some flowers. So today's flowers were brought to you by my mother and um, I hope that they last all week. At the very end, they start to droop a little bit, but even that, I don't know, it's kind of neat to me to see all of the stages of a rose. And then um, once, once those are pretty much, you know, once they've run their lifespan, then I like to sprinkle them on uh, the tray or wherever the roses are and just kind of use it as some confetti for the flowers, almost like they're losing their petals. But um, yeah, so I, there are really only certain kinds of colors that I love when it comes to roses that I would want to have around me. I love the blush tones. I love the white ones that have a very, the palest of pink in the center. And then I also love the, um, just that rosy hue, that pink rosy hue, not a really bright pink, but a, like a dusty rose color. And, um, yeah. So today they had those white ones that had the palest of pink in the center. And then I also got those baby roses that are like spray roses that are really pretty. And um, it's just something that makes my day. And I've been trying to do that at least once a week because I just notice how much it brightens my mood to have real flowers around me. And so I just love that my mom knows that about me and, and you know, is willing to um, do those kind of things to really brighten my mood. So anyway, thank you mom for the roses. They are wonderful. And then I also got um, some for 
the living area and I added some eucalyptus inside of those ones because um, I just wanted to make some larger arrangements out there, especially where we will all be gathered for lunch today. So uh, did I talk your ear off today? It's probably going to be a much longer video, but let me know what your thoughts are on that subject and then also what little thing made your day today and until tomorrow i hope that you all take care and we will talk then bye everyone